Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's session. Uh, this is a training session on the pattern for success. And uh, tonight we will zoom in. We will focus on inviting and the following a, a specific sequence. But before we do that, I'd like to just introduce you to our trainer or speaker, presenter, um, the Mr. Guru Derek Tellis. So just to quickly uh, let you know, I, I don't know, uh, you know, I got to meet Derek um, about six months ago. And the one thing that I can say about him is that he's a very hard worker. I mean, what he has accomplished in a very short time is absolute amazing. Having started in this industry when computers were not around, Derek had some successes, but mostly failures. Uh, and many times it was because the company went under these, these um, uh, companies. Uh, and this taught Derek a lot from many successful mentors and relationships that he built over the years. Take the five people you associate with most, take their earnings each month and add them up. The answer will tell you where you are. So listen here, choose your associates carefully. And this is what Derek did over the last 35 years. He made friends and he worked with many top leaders such as Tom Schreiter, whom we um, could experience live uh, via Zoom. Um, he was here on call with us in one of our training sessions. His son was here, um, Keith Schreiter. And then also Brian Tracy, Randy Gage, Art Yonak, Fraser Brooks. It's just a few of the people that he know personally um, and that he met over the years and relationships that he built. And then also including in these relationships are Boris uh, Sapunov and Cedric Harris, um, which is currently, um, you know, in the, the opportunity that we will be sharing on Tuesday evenings and Thursdays. Uh, he is the leader of our team and totally committed to helping every single person who decides to join us. Now, over the next few months in this business, you will be helped to develop his skills, mindset, and uh, not only help you to become an experience, um, have a great experience, but actually becoming a better version of yourself. You will become a better communicator, and I'm proud to say that Derek is our team leader and that, uh, you know, dealing with him, you're definitely putting yourself on a road of success. And without any further ado, I'd like to now hand over to Derek to take us into the training session. Derek, I'm handing over to you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Bianca, and uh, welcome everybody. Good evening um, and welcome to this session. Um, today I wanted to cover, particularly for people um, getting started and, and how the first stages should be and also to really go through the sequence of events in terms of how you take it from the initial contact with somebody and then um, their, their, once you find out their needs, wants or don't wants, then how you take it to the next step. So imagine a situation where you've actually found out somebody's needs once and don't once, and usually this is done by the, the greet and qualify. Um, again, just look at one of the videos we've done on that. We will cover that again uh, at another time. But imagine you've actually um, either on, on, on uh, social media or directly actually managed to find out somebody's needs once and don't once, and um, then, then the next stage would be to really um, get the information to them. Um, so, so before you actually do that, sometimes you can actually link um, what their needs are to to what they uh, what the next stage is, or, or their need to actually watch the information, or to see if they're actually serious about wanting to see that information. So you might say something like, um, "I can't promise you anything, John, but um, I've got some information that will help you." Um, get that goal that you just said to me, you know, about wanting a bit more money to send your daughter to university next year or, or whatever that need is that they want. So once you've linked it, then they, they're they more, uh, more in, 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 more, more like in the mood to watch it, if you like, more in the right place, right mental frame of mind to, to, to look at it. Um, and then you can qualify them slightly and say, look, John, are you going to, 
definitely watch this because um, I just I wanted to catch up with you. I've got a lot of people that are interested. Um, they don't know how many videos you've got or what you're doing or whatever. They're just listening to what you're saying. So you say I've got a lot of people interested and I just want to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm using my time appropriately with the people that are actually interested in making a difference to their lives. So things like that, you just sort of try and make sure that they are qualified to listen to the information. And, and again, go back to, you know, what you, what you say is, is it very important. And sometimes it's worth writing things down. Um, you know, I've got, for example, a script here I use on a regular basis in, in LinkedIn. And uh, in that, I, I say to people like, you know, I'm curious, and this is after a little bit of a conversation with them, I'm curious, um, John, are you open to me sharing a short video on how I'm going to work less hours and make more money? And then just leave a blank and then see what they come back to you with. Um, it's a game. Then obviously they'll say, yeah, I'm interested in finding out more. Then it's a game changer 2021. This is what I'm texting back to them. I'm not actually saying this verbally. Don't worry if you're not interested, though. Um, I just thought I'd ask as many people are jumping into this opportunity. So try and think around that and then and fine tune your words so that you get the person's attention, get them to want more information. Think about it from your point of view. You know, um, I've just found out. And and, and, and just saying that, just I, I've just found out that sort of makes you wonder. What have I just found out? You're sort of trying to get people to react. You're trying to get people to ask why, what, how. If you can ask a question that allows people to do that, then then great. You know, one of the things we were using a while ago is we just found out how to reduce our rent by half. But you know, you could also say, look, listen. One of one of the girls today, in fact, Lindsay was saying to to somebody what 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 she was saying was, I'm 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 cutting back a day at work now she works you know uh three or four days a week she's a full-time mum with uh three boys and she said um i'm cutting back a day at work um and 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 then she shut up and and the person says how are you doing that or why are you doing that knowing full well that she works to get money um and then of course the next question you know the next thing leads to to actually sending out the information about how she's doing it um, and that's the important bit so yeah things like that are very very important how you lead into it so once you've done this the important thing about the information is okay John when are you going to listen to it um, today tomorrow when are you free to listen to it and again the other thing I say to people is be prepared to do a presentation you know the short presentation we've done with a few slides that can actually be enacted and in fact today Lindsay did the presentation me is brilliant so she's doing Thursday's presentation um, which which she's happy to do um, again you know be prepared to do that if people have got the, the time if they're if they're ripe and they're actually excited or they're interested in what you've said up to then then why delay you might as well do the the, the, the short presentation and then what I can do and will do sometimes is follow that with, look, I'd like to send you some more information. Now you've seen the, the information that you've just seen and you've asked me a few questions about how it works and you understand the business model. You like the idea. However, what I'd like to do just to, to make sure you understand what it's all about is send you another video. Um, and I usually send the, the next video, which I'm going to play now, and that will allow you to see what they receive. I don't know how many of you have actually got this video, but I'll actually play it and then we'll see um, and from your point of view um, what the questions are after that or what the conversation will be after that. So let me just go on to that one. My name is Tim Sales. Do you know that there are very specific differences in what the poor, the middle class, and the wealthy buy with their money on payday? It's so simple yet so different it nearly knocked me out of my chair when I finally understood it. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about and you can evaluate for yourself why the wealthy keep getting wealthier and the poor keep getting poorer 
and the middle class are stressed out. To understand this, I need to make sure you understand some basic business terms in the way that I'm using them. The words that you need to know are income, which means money you bring in, expenses, which means money you spend, assets, which is the most confusing one. An asset is defined as something that pays you. If you're an accountant or a financial planner, I just raised your eyebrows a little because the traditional definition of an asset is things you own. More on that in just a second. Liabilities is the last definition and is defined as things that cost you. A house is typically viewed as an asset, but can it actually be a liability? Yes. By the definition I used earlier, anything that costs you money is a liability, not an asset. But to answer your curiosity, yes, a house can be considered an asset. When is it an asset? When it pays you money. If you were to buy a house and rent it out, and it paid you a positive cash flow every month, that would then be considered an asset. One more time on the definitions just to be very clear before we continue. Income is money you make, expenses are money you spend, an asset pays you, and a liability costs you. Now let's look at what the poor buy on payday. On payday, the poor buy what I'm going to call stuff. What is stuff? Inexpensive things that people buy that they don't really need to survive. You go into someone's house and you can't find any counter or tabletop space in the whole house because of all the stuff on it. You can't find a single foot of white space on any wall in their house because of all the stuff that's hanging on it. Where did they get this stuff? They bought it at the flea market, at the garage sale, at the dollar store, at the craft show. Their house and their car is full and cluttered with stuff. So income comes in on payday and then goes straight out the expense column to buy stuff. The poor really never educate themselves on assets and liabilities. The poor justify their buying all of this stuff by claiming that it costs so little. Yes, it was very cheap, inexpensive, not a lot of money. But over the years, it's all they ever had. The problem is their income never produced or created more income. I know this group very well because this was me. This was the way I was raised. I, in no way, am cutting or undermining this group of people or any other group. I just see a lot of financial pain out there and that need not be that way. I only want to help you and hopefully you'll pass this information on to people you care about. Creating wealth is not a mystery. It's a formula. The only reason someone doesn't create wealth is because they don't know or don't apply the formula. Let's continue on and look at the middle class. The middle class is the group that society mistakenly thinks are the rich. They are not. Yes, they typically earn a six-figure income, but what they buy on payday keeps them prisoners of the middle class. What they buy on payday are liabilities. Remember the definition of a liability? Things that cost you? By buying liabilities, the money gets pushed up and out their expense column. Liabilities are items like cars, boats, houses, airplanes, credit card debt. Let me explain the way this happens. On payday, the middle class make a nice big paycheck. Let's say $15,000 for the month. They then split that down the middle and pay their monthly expenses with half, and with the other half, they make a down payment on a new car. The car costs $7,000 down, and after they tack on the insurance and the maintenance, that liability costs them $1,100 new dollars every single month. A few months go by and they want a boat, then a vacation home, a Rolex watch on the credit card, a vacation on the credit card, and before you know it, their liabilities have raised the expense levels to near or above their income levels. They actually spend equal to or more than they make, meaning that they have to go to work and make a certain amount of money every single month because of their liabilities. The other important issue with both the poor and the middle class is that normally all of their income is dependent on their own effort, meaning they've educated themselves to exchange their knowledge and expertise for someone's money. Here's an example. An attorney is knowledgeable about law, so people pay him or her money in exchange for that knowledge on an hourly basis. The problem there is that if they're not, the attorney, sharing that knowledge with a client, then the attorney is not making any money. Their stress level is as tight as a piano string, and if you were to ask them to go to dinner with you, they very rarely can because of how much money it'll cost them to take that time off. On the surface, life is merry. The reality is that it's a roller coaster ride. That's the middle class. Now let's look at what the wealthy buy. On payday, the wealthy buy assets. 
Again, an asset is something that pays you. If you want to become wealthy, buy assets that then earn you more income. The money wheel looks like this. Buy assets that produce cash, that then buy more assets that produce more cash, that then buy more assets that produce more cash. The wealthy spend their money and buy things that produce more money. Here's a couple of examples of assets that produce more income. Investments are the obvious, stocks, bonds, real estate. Education is another asset. If you learn how to do something and actually do it, that produces more income, that's buying an asset. I heard a great expression once, if you think education is expensive, you should see how expensive stupidity is. Another example of assets you can buy that pay you is businesses, especially those businesses that can create a passive income. Passive meaning that once you build it up, it pays you whether you're still building it or not. A little example is if you buy a pinball machine and put it in a barber shop. You don't spend any of the profits. You save them until you can buy another pinball machine and put it in another barber shop. This, by the way, was Warren Buffett's first business. Warren Buffett, by the way, is one of the top two richest men in America. The wealthy are extremely eager to find those passive income businesses because it continues to pay them month after month, year after year, long after they've stopped working the business. That's actually the way I created my millions. I found a passive income business that I built up and it continues to pay me month after month, year after year. I then took those profits and multiplied them in another passive money business, and then again in another. In conclusion, here's what I've learned. You can't find these passive money businesses unless you're open to hearing about them. Then once you find them, be willing to research them. The reason I say this is that I answered a hokey little ad that I ended up making a couple of million dollars from, simply because of that ad. So these businesses are out there, you just gotta find them. You've also got to be educated enough that when the right situation does present itself, you don't miss it. So remember, the poor buy stuff, the middle class buy liabilities, and the wealthy buy assets, preferably businesses that can create passive money. Then take that money and buy another asset that produces more money. That's the wealth creation formula. I sincerely hope that you've learned a couple of things from this explanation. I'm Sales. Okay, guys, I'm going to pick on a couple of people just to help me out of this. Um, Nicholas, can you give me a hand? I'll just unmute you. Where are you? I'm here. Good. <laughs> You're going to be my guinea pig today. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, Nicholas. Imagine you've uh, you've already seen. I'll I'll, I'll role play. Okay, you you are who you are. You you. No one else. Okay. I'm me. You're you, and um, you've seen the uh, the first video, which is the um, gym scenario. Okay. Um, you like that, and you said to me that uh, you like the idea of actually earning some extra money. Uh, you're in a good job. You like the job, but you wouldn't mind having more time with your kids and also traveling abroad okay so um now you've seen this video after you've seen that video and we had our initial uh, initial discussion so i'm going to ask you a question so so nicholas you you got a chance to see the what the wealthy buy on payday yeah absolutely yeah thanks a lot okay. for the video no no that was really really good i mean it's great talking to you i mean all, so far everything we've said and discussed has been really really good i find you a very interesting person um, what I'd like to ask you, Nicholas, on that video, which which bit did you find that uh, attracted you most? Which did you find that had the most um, uh, impact on you? I well, I liked very much the, the the rich buying assets that generates more income. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so you understand the asset bit. So that's really really good. So so if I said to you, for example, um, a house can be an asset and also it might not be an asset. Would you know why that would be? Well, I'm thinking if uh, if the house is actually, if I'm in benefit with this investment or not. Mm -hmm. Let's say you own two houses, okay? You live in one, uh, but you don't live in the other. Uh, is the house that you live in an asset? I would think if that house right now is not actually generating I mean, increasing value. It, uh -huh. it can increase value without me knowing it. <laughs> yes, true. 
But remember what we what we said on the on the on the. It doesn't uh, pay video? me now. Yes. It doesn't pay you. Okay. So a house is actually not an asset when, and if you think about it logically, right? You, you you're not going to leave the house and live in the tent, are you? You're going to stay so. in the same house. Okay. <laughs> so so the house has to be lived in by you and your family. You haven't That's really true. got a choice, have you? But the other house, you could actually rent that, couldn't you? And yep. then it becomes an asset. So. What I'm trying to say really is imagine you had a team of um, 30 people paying you $1,000 a month. Would you call that an asset? Well, that would be an asset, yes. Because it's paying you every month, yeah? If I don't pay them, yeah. <laughs> and they pay me. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about the membership. Remember when I tell you about the, the gym membership, when you've got 30 people, you actually get paid $1,000 a month, okay? So now the next step really for me would be for you to see a presentation so that I can show you how that ties in with the company that we've joint, joint ventured with. Um, and then you'll be able to see the whole picture and then make a decision based on that really. You will have okay. seen everything you need to see. Great, okay. Any questions so far about anything? Well, I'm just very curious of how this is going to apply to me because okay. I don't have a team of 30 people. No, you don't, that's true. Uh, but remember when you saw the uh, model, we based it on bringing uh, members or referrals into that model. So people are involved, yeah? Okay. And uh, this is how we're gonna show you the assets. The assets in, in what we do is, is a referral model and it'll actually show you how by getting um, people to, to collaborate with you, to join with you, that you as a team can actually create a, a residual income. So not just you benefit, but everyone in your team benefit as well. And that's what I'm going to try and show you with the with the presentation. Okay. 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 So so the next step then going now coming off that, the next step would be to either send the video or again do the presentation. Now if you think about it, we've shown people quite a lot of information so far. So we've got to really tighten the gap between the first bit of information and the last bit of information. And the main reason for that is because people have still got it fresh in their mind. The longer that gap goes, the, the more susceptible people are to the neg negative influences of other people. Um, I was just talking, um, in fact, to Lindsay today, you know, we've got, we've got people, for example, who one of the couple didn't watch or see the presentation. And the chances are now that that person may or may not have put that other person off. So in a couple situation, I try and get both to watch and both to take part. But then I also said to Lindsay, it might be worth asking the person, and this is another thing to do. You can actually say, look, are you, are you, for example, if it's a woman, right? Now, just because it's a woman, we don't assume that that woman can't make decisions, okay? So we say to them, you know, that if the husband's working late, not able to get home, are you actually able to make a decision uh, on, on whether to, to move forward with this or not? You know, at the end of the day, do we need your other partner or your partner or your husband or whatever to, to join the presentation so you can make a joint decision? Or are you able to do it before? Now, the reason why I was saying that this particular person was already involved in another network marketing company. So the chances are, uh, and she was doing it, I believe, on her own. So chances are she, she may have had already made a decision to join that on her own so again it's things to bear in mind and the thing is all these things come to play the more you do it the more talking you do with people and everything else um does anyone want to ask any questions about anything let me just unmute you guys i have a question maybe yeah, uh, do, you have, yeah. do you have a preference between the uh what the rich buy on payday or the gym scenario, do you have a preference between the two? Um, I tend to use both. Why? Because I'm getting, I, I, I tend to send both together. I oh, don't I send you. one or the other, okay, if I'm sending it. If I'm actually uh, doing a presentation, I'll do the presentation of the gym and then I'll follow that with the video. Because okay, I want to get me. into dialogue and that's the important thing. I want them to begin to understand what, what the nature of our business is. I want to, if they don't, because again, a lot of people don't, I want them to get an idea of what an asset is. I want to get conversations going around what we, what this can do for them. 
And that's always the priority in your mind. What can I do for you, Nicholas? What can I do to help you? Um, that's always going through my mind, you know. And, and again, I'll make it relatable. You know, I'll say, you know, in, in your job at the moment, Nicholas, as an engineer, how many people are you in charge of? Three, four. Three, four people. Okay, so with those three, four people, um, if they work extra hard, do you get paid extra? No. No? Really? Okay. Do you get a pay rise? I might that. <laughs> it might happen. <laughs> it might happen. Okay. Um, so they have no direct influence on your pay. They don't know, indeed. No. No. Okay. So, so wouldn't it be nice if you had those four people working with you and it directly, in, in fact, impacted on what your income was? It might revolutionize my company. <laughs> would, you, would you work better with them, do you think? I would love that, yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's what we're going to talk about in the next presentation. So that okay. you'll see the bigger picture. So already, you're, 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 you see that the idea is for, for the person to be positively with you. And then it's really, really easy because what you then do is you go through the presentation there's very few questions and you say, well, the next bit, if you're, if you're happy with, I, no, I always say this, is there anything else you need to ask before we move to the next step? Anything at all. And then if they haven't got anything to ask, well, I say, well, the next step is, and, and it fits in really well with Mondays now, next step is get you signed up, looking through your back office, uh, understanding how it all works, and then ready for Mondays getting started training. So you don't send any company presentation at that time. I tend to do the presentation or, or invite them. Okay. You can invite okay. them or, or you or you or you send them the video. Yeah, you can do any of those. But the idea is really to keep the dialogue going, keep it fresh, keep it. You know, in some cases because uh, the presentations are so short now, you can go through the whole lot in one go. One, two, three. Done. Sure. You know, and that way you keep it. Especially if they're excited. Have you got time? You know, I say, look, have you got time? If you've got time, we might as well go through the next step because then you'll be further ahead and more advanced in knowledge. Um, assess the situation. I think we tend to leave too long gaps between um, one step and the next. And then it becomes a bit of an arduous task. It be, looks like it's manipulated. And that's what I don't like. I don't like people feeling like they're being manipulated. I'd rather do it flowing than... You know, and again, you know, you can assess it. You can say, look, Nicholas, have you got another half hour? Let's go through it. If you're excited to watch more and see more and I'll show you how it all works, I'll do it now. Why wait? You know, when you start giving people instructions and saying, OK, I'm going to wait for this or, or, or yeah, I'll tell you what, 10 o'clock tomorrow night or 7 o'clock tomorrow, you know, let, let's invite you to a present. It's all it's all fixed, isn't it? It's all controlled. And people feel like they're being controlled and they worry about that. And because they worry about that, their, their attention is not always the same. If it's a free flowing conversation, what does Tim Sales say? It's got to be freely and openly. If you have a free and open conversation, you can actually do all of it in one go. I've done a few sign ups in one day, you know, on the same day rather, within a couple of hours. That's where I've spent time with the person, talk to them. I, I, I must admit, sometimes I'm, I'm also responsible for not necessarily spending the time I need to because I've got things on my mind or I've got something else coming up <laughs> so sometimes we, we, we don't put the full attention that we need to give to the person I do believe that um, so it's important because at the end of the day remember this person's going to be in business with you and it could be in business with you for a long time and, and as I've said before we could be spending holidays with each other so we need to get on <laughs> otherwise you know it's not going to be much fun um, you need to you need to know that you're going to get on with the people that you're actually going to be in business with, and that's ideal because if you're doing that, then then the 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 the, the business marriage, if you like, is going to be perfect. The relationship is going to be long term, and then you can you know you can bounce ideas off each other. You can you know do whatever, help each other, you know, get the most out of each other's um, careers in this opportunity in network marketing. Anyone, any questions at all? Everyone's very quiet here. Anyone at all? There was a question of Mirna in the chat. Okay, I didn't see that. Let me have a look. Uh, 
I don't know what stage that is at Myrna. I'm not sure what it relates to. He might have put it in when I'd already passed a certain stage. No. Mm -hmm. no. Mana, can you talk? Well, she has this sound issue, so maybe oh, so she needs to switch issue. device. Okay. Anyone else? Um, Lindsay, do you want to? Do you want to? Lindsay's actually just done the presentation to me today, and uh, she's she's also volunteered to do Thursday's presentation, which is really good. Um, do you want to say anything about anything that you've picked up recently at all that's helped you, Lindley? Um, I think a lot of it is just the way that you communicate with people and taking the time to really, really listen and understand rather than be quick to judge somebody, you know, so you can really help them. And uh, listening to other people, you know, when we listen to Tim Sales and when I've listened to you, the way that you interact and talk to people, it's just learning all of the time. So um, I'm really enjoying the process, to be honest, and being yeah. a part of um, everybody else's process as well. So, yeah. That's right. And it's just and, little and, and things just a like... a quick one, Lindsay. How are you managing to get so many three-ways in front of me? I'm going to let you answer <laughs> I that. I tell them, if you don't, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> I start threatening people. <laughs> 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 you got oh, right? dear. How, what, what do you say to people tell me what you say um at some of them i've just sent the the um little clip to you know the one where you put i'm working i'm really busy at the moment I'm working on something interesting yeah it oh, may yeah. or not, oh, not yeah. be so you send that a one chat. yeah uh-huh yeah and then um if it's somebody I haven't spoken to for a while, I've used the scripts that they gave us in the cold calling. Oh yeah, okay. Um, yeah, in the in the cold calling presentation, I can't remember how it breaks up, but you ask a question and then yeah, they say yes, okay. and then so you, you say have, you have the scripts the handy if you need to use them. Okay. Yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah, it's just a question of using all different kinds of ways, really. I think the key thing, and I've said this before, guys, is to get people into conversation. I'm not yeah. a believer in trying to keep it at the chat level or the, you know, sending information. There is no emotion there. There is nothing you can feel from that person. So it's, it's, it's almost impossible to get somebody to dialogue with you if you're in that situation. So if, if it's a hard thing for you to do, well, then just chat to people without any, any um, goal in mind. You know, literally go and chat to people. You know, daily I'll talk to people online, even if they're already in some other network. Because I want to know, I'm talking to people now, even professional networkers who've got the best um, uh, advertising around them. Because, uh, you know, if they're really, really big networkers, they might give me some tips. And, and quite often they do, because they, they are actually professionals. And because they're professionals and they're good at it, they understand about everything we're talking about. So the good ones will actually say to you, you know, I literally say, well, I'm just starting out. I don't really, you know, say say anything good, not anything bad, but I don't say anything like hype anything up. I just say, look, I'm looking for advice. I have a challenge with this and I have a challenge with that. And, and I'll tell you what, you get some really good tips and advice. You know, just ask people and they'll tell you they're willing to share and then and then thank them. Obviously, that's the big thing. Thank them for that and, you know, keep in touch. And you never know, guys, you know, sometimes bad things happen to other people. I have had one or two in the past where, you know, somebody who's been quite successful <coughs> suddenly decided that they weren't doing something. And then they contacted me. To, they didn't unfortunately join what I wanted to join, what I was in, but they contacted me to find out what I was up to. And that's because I was in touch with them on a regular basis. So you never know. You know, it does happen. It does happen. I have a I have a question about this script of uh, Simon Chan. Uh, when this is like you know, uh, so just hi, how are you? I'm I'm very busy. Uh, can I ask you something? And then they say yes, and you follow up with a, uh, I'm working on this video. Do you want to watch it? And something like that. at least this is what I'm doing because I have my video. So I actually mm -hmm. send my video. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've been I've been. So it means for these people, you have not qualified them. So yeah. do you go back qualify them after the video? 
Yeah, you can do it. And also, I'd, I'd rather say, yeah, yeah, if you're saying you're working on something, I'd say I'd, I'd really love it if you'd reviewed it for me and gave me your That's valid, do, valid yeah. opinion, yeah? So that way it makes them important. And this is also something you can do with people who you, not fear, but you put on a pedestal. A lot of people put doctors on the pedestal, right? But we all go to the same loo, okay? <laughs> we're not we're not different. We're just different. Different people have learned different things. But some people worry and get really worried about around doctors. They they seem to sort of freeze up and can't talk, right? But if you've got you know a friend who's a doctor or in the family or whatever, just say, look, I I admire you for what you've done, and I'd like you to review this information for me. Tell me what you think. You know full well you're not doing that. You're actually trying to, to, to see what they think of it to maybe get them in. But the thing is, they may even say to you, look, I've got some friends who might be interested in that. Because referrals are another thing. People do pass referrals on. You know, I've had quite a few where um, people have actually said, oh, look, my son might be interested or my, my wife might be interested because she's not working. Is it not, does it not pass as too little assertive when we're talking about assertive, assertiveness? I was just saying, uh, do you want to, can you give a feedback? What do you think? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just wondering at some point. Well, no, you're, you're, Cause you're I, I feel I'm being reviewed. too kind because I've been, yeah. I've been actually spending these days with my warm market yeah. and doing this approach and asking feedback. Okay. It leads, it, it leads sometimes to just some feedback and what do you think? And at, at okay. the end it's just like, Oh, okay. No, not okay. Well, well I, I'd actually, when I go back, I'll say, would you ever see yourself in that position? What is it that you want? Would you see this being a well? It depends what video, obviously, you know, you're looking at. For, for example, yeah, the gym. you're showing the yeah. asset. Okay, the gym. So, so what do you think of that that model? What do you think of that business model, um, Nicholas? If you are getting a thousand dollars a month now, would that make any difference to you at all? You know, qualify them like that. Would that make any difference to you? Would you be able to do anything with it? You know, most people would be a bit crazy to say no <laughs> they'll say something but you want them to be more freely open with you you know is it something that would interest you you work towards it you know but by talking about you know that extra money in their pocket what is it because everyone if you like would not be doing it for free would they but they they, they are doing it for the money um it, unless you're actually making a lot of money uh and then you don't have to worry it worry about it then that's different then you might be looking to actually get other people involved in an opportunity you might be asking them um you might be looking to help people as opposed to think about money you know there is that as well so some people i know some multi multi-millionaires who built bigger teams than they ever had and they just love talking to people There's a guy I met years and years ago. His name's Bill O'Brien, and he he's dead now. But I tell you, what, that guy was so assertive. He didn't need the money. He was a multi-billionaire. He didn't need the money, but he enjoyed the 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 the, the building of people. He enjoyed the helping people, and that was what came out most. I think even Colin Colin knows Bill. Um, we we met him many years ago. He was an amazing character. Very 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 um very cool. Yeah, head of um. Head of IBM, wasn't he? That's right. He was head of IBM. That was his job. Hundred and thirty-six thousand dollars a year back in nineteen eighty something. I'm glad you remembered all that, Colin. Yes, yes. Yeah, before and he, he uh, before he, he, he had an that. office. He had, he had an office with a bedroom next door to it because he couldn't get away. From <laughs> he the couldn't office. get away. That's it. He joined network marketing to actually get time back. And he launched that. Uh, he launched the first the first satellite. Uh, satellite. Satellite. Or it? it was actually landing on the. Um, Was it Pershing? Was it? Was it on the? Yeah, one Pershing of the first landed landing. on Mars, wasn't it? And, landed um, on Mars, yeah. Yeah, that was he. He was responsible for that. So that that was the guy, yeah, Bill O'Brien, amazing person, amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, he, was, he was something else. And then again, you know, who approached him? <laughs> imagine, imagine having something like that in your business. You know, approached like that. Okay. Anyone else with any questions? Colin, you got any questions? No, not really. I think uh, I think I need to, uh, yeah, from my point of view, I don't want confessions in front of everybody. I need to, uh, I really need to um, start uh, getting into into conversation with people instead of um, relying on um, on on uh, messaging too much. Yeah, I think. and I think this is the most most important thing. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, I I used to do it. Don't get me wrong. I used to do it a lot, and um, my results started happening when I started getting into conversations. 
and and it's amazing how it turns around once you do it two three four five ten conversations a day and you'll be amazed how things turn around it really does and you're more than capable of conversing uh, well yeah that's it i'm, I'm, I'm quite adept at it i don't mind talking to people i think um yeah it's just uh i should i should concentrate on getting getting that, getting that done yeah. Who's that? I don't know what was going on there. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Moni, can't hear you. Right. So, um, any questions, guys? Any other questions? Not from me. No. I don't have any questions mm. at the moment. I'm sure mm. some will come up and I'll be nagging your ear off again soon. <laughs> but um, yes. I, what I've found as well is when, when you are talking to people, and um, and it's the right sort of person. You don't have to worry about um, too much about what you're saying because no, the conversation right. tends to flow more naturally, and they kind of they they talk to you more about stuff anyway. So I know sometimes when you're going to talk to somebody, it can feel a bit uncomfortable because you you know in the back of your mind, eventually you're probably going to be talking to them about the business, but when it's the right sort of person, or if you just be yourself rather than try and be a business person, people feel a lot more comfortable and, and uh, you know, it can help other people open up more and, and talk to you more. And you can feel it when they're like involved in the conversation more, you can really feel it. It's, it's nice. Yeah, you, you almost can't say the wrong things to the right person. Yeah, yeah, you that can, is it. You can even try and put them off, and they still want more. So yeah, yeah. Right. get out of my business, right. don't out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's so true. That's so true. I think we had it the other day, didn't we, um, Lindsay, with uh, Jam? Was it? Yeah. 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 Very. Yeah, and I think I think um, Byron's a little bit like that. I think as well. Oh yes, 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 like, yes. Yeah. So how many people do you talk to roughly or get into a chat a week then, Lindsay? I've not, I've been talking to only like two or three different people a day. Okay. But I've been doing it every single day. So that's so you're why. Doing it every day, yeah. So you're yeah. getting the results because you, you, you literally are getting a lot of three-way calls to me, which is great. Fantastic, in fact. So, um yeah, now you'll be able to actually say, okay, let me show you the first part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I so will. That'll be good. That, that, the, 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 Lindsay did a presentation today, Colin, the, uh, the gym thing, and it went perfectly. No problem. She's a great girl. I'm going to have to um, get my act together. Yeah, no, she's she's, she's going she's gonna she's to take She's going to be teaching me what to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Yeah. No. Boris, any any input, please? The input is um, I'm just sad to see that there are not more people here. <laughs> yes. Yes. Ah. That's, that's, uh, I'm sure the right people are here, but I'm sad that not everyone is here. It's, mm. It seems like everyone else know what to do. <laughs> yes, so much. <laughs> it, it, it's just the execution is missing, but everyone seems to know that what they need to do. Um, do we need to get in conversation with the people in the group? Maybe that's the that's yeah, some of the. Yeah. No, I think I think um, I don't know. Maybe maybe in the morning we need to set like a goal and then. You know, instead of uh, almost like uh, having all the trainings, just to have a discussion at the end of the day like this in a training, not so much as a training, but but like a feedback of what everyone has achieved. Mm. Um, because it sounds like all those trainings are excellent, but they're excellent if people are applying them right away. Otherwise, it's just, you know, another hour point, you know, into listening into a staff that is excellent and like so many people are dedicated to put their time and efforts behind the training 
Uh, but if it's no execution behind the training, then you know what's the purpose of, of the training in the first place? So I think almost like I feel like we need um, a, a different kind of accountability. Like okay, we we connect in the morning to to be empowered and to be inspired and like to go out and to execute. And it's almost like we need we need to have like almost like evening chat for maybe. 20 minutes something like this just to see like what we've done during the day individually and collectively and this probably will inspire people to do more than actually just coming to a training i don't know yeah no it's great i mean i mean Lindsay's really busy right she's working and looking out looking after three boys i had only one daughter to look after for goodness sake, I was knackered by the end of the day every day. <laughs> so three boys and, and, and work and, oh, just, you know, unbelievable. This is just showing the, the level of commitment. I mean, kudos to Lindsay. I mean, it's like, it's massive kudos. It's like, uh, you know, there is, there is no question about this. It should take away all our excuses for anybody who hasn't got children. <laughs> Absolutely. <yeah. laughs> It should really go. Cool. So yeah, no, guys, you know, it's 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 really good. And Lindsay, thanks for your input as well today. You're very welcome. Thank you guys for all of your help. You're welcome too. <laughs> and we're actually gonna get oh yeah, we've got time. We've got now I've got another presentation with Lindsay after this. <laughs> so we're straight into something else. Uh so we we'll, we'll draw this to an end then unless there are any questions. Uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, so don't forget to support Lindsay on Thursday when she does her presentation. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Friday, Friday we'll do uh, more training. And Wednesday, of course, we're going to be doing the book, the book of the month. Uh, so Bianca will be doing that. So brilliant. So tomorrow we'll actually be doing a full blown presentation. Uh, which is the epic one. So try and get anybody, uh, your guests that are coming in, please get them to see the gym presentation first so that I can marry the two. And then uh, we'll go from there. So thank you very much, everyone. Great job, guys. Excellent. Good night. Yeah. Good night. See you later. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye -bye.